It's recording. It's recording. And the cameras are rolling. So, welcome back, guys, to another episode of the Bamton Experience, episode 46. That's correct. Second take. Second take, <laughs> yeah. We did a uh, record for, uh, we didn't record, but we tried to record for five minutes, but kind of forgot to push the record button. And that, so. that was the very first mistake that we did in episode number one. Uh, back in the days yeah. so I, we're I, a bit rusty here yeah. in the live setup i feel pretty like nox- nostalgic right now mm-hmm. actually for not pressing it but uh yeah fortunately you you noticed a bit sooner than we did back then yeah back then we were we did like a full episode we did the full episode and then afterwards yeah. we realized that we did not push record on, on the sound i um, like that you say we realized because it's was yeah. like yeah it was basically my mistake it was yeah, your but, fault yeah but it's good to be back um welcome back to another episode um Back sitting here together, not mm-hmm. doing it online. That's fantastic. I yeah. prefer these episodes. Uh, the, these are much more fun. Mm. And uh, it's been a while. So uh, awesome sitting here with you again. Hans Christian meeting. Also. Likewise. You are, you are really dressed well today, I, I yes. will say. And also we have Oliver uh, behind the camera. It's also yeah. been a while since, we, since we've had him. So mm-hmm. it's great to have the band back together. It's it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Even though we would like to be in Malaysia. Yeah that's uh that's true so um we are going to touch on that we have a bunch of questions from you guys and some of them is about whether me and hans christian is going to malaysia or not um let's just start out right there obviously we are not this is a yeah. uh, monday the 22nd of may and the tournament is uh, starting tomorrow so yeah. we won't be able to reach the the tournament start no in time. no i would actually have to play tomorrow if i went there because i would have to play qualifiers yeah. so yeah we are out of that one uh i'm still struggling a little bit with my hamstring so i decided to pull out uh yeah to try and get back to 100 percent before i play anything again i'm a little bit sick and tired of like playing at a like 90 percent capacity all the time mm-hmm. and not being able to go full out in training so so what what's 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 the issue with the hamstring is that's something new right uh well it's been on and off since uh back in december actually so yeah i pulled it a muscle in my hamstring in december right before i went on holiday uh during christmas and then it's been yeah on and off a little bit i i haven't really been able to get 100 percent rid of it then i thought i was uh completely past it had two weeks of really good training but then uh after i came back home from a uh the czech league finals uh, the first training after that, I felt like a small pain again. Okay. Uh, so now I decided to like just, yeah, take some time off to be sure that I don't like aggravate it and make it even worse. Uh, okay. If there's any chance I can play the World Championships, I don't want to like uh, have a bad period of training over the summer. Um, yeah. So no, no point in risking anything playing Malaysia. Oh, and and that is like, I mean, there is also a few people asking about your retirement plan and stuff, and mm. I think everyone knows that you do not have um, a whole lot left in you mm-hmm. uh, in, in your active badminton career but yours for me to see and correct me if i'm if i'm wrong you're looking for that right moment to like to like uh, call it a, call it a career and 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 yep. it is the the main goal to to end your career in Copenhagen at the World Championships or, or what's what's the plan i wouldn't really say it's a goal cuz it's out of my control uh it doesn't look very good so but that's what you hope for right that's what i hope for yeah. yeah um but i just got the news last week that i got a spot at the indonesia open uh so that's very nice i will try to get ready for that in three weeks from now i think mm-hmm. and then i have canada open as well and after that i have no plan so yeah we'll see if i make it for the world championships if not then canada might be the last one but i'm also thinking about playing yeah a minor event in the autumn of this year okay uh, but like I know for certain that after the World Championships, I won't be in the national team anymore. Okay. I will I will be starting my uh, new life, if if you can call that, because I'm still gonna play a lot of badminton, so it's not gonna be okay. too different. It's just not okay. gonna be a lot of international tournaments. I didn't knew that. So so you have a uh, is that something that you worked out with the federation that yeah. you're going to quit after the World Championships from yeah. the national training center? Yeah. I might wow. be going there once a week for like sparring, um, just also to get some high quality training for myself because I still want to play leagues in Denmark and France next year. So it would be good for me to still be sparring with the, yeah you guys when you're home and also the other guys in there. Um, 
then of course like the focus will be a little bit different from the coaches because i will just be like a help for you guys mm. so yeah you but won't it, be prioritized in no, any way not at all. shape not or at form all. no 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 okay so i didn't know that yeah no but it's also quite uh, new that we actually came to that conclusion yeah interesting for for how long have you been uh, part of the praxis out uh, in, in at the national training center here in denmark yeah so since 2005 yeah and now we are in 2023 so, so 18, 18 years. years yeah wow that's yeah. crazy yeah that's a long time i don't think i'm gonna miss it too much actually no though, to be honest i but i still think it's a good thing for me to also go there once a week still and keep like in touch with everyone and, yeah uh, yeah i still enjoy the training Uh, but it will also be good for me to try something else. But 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 what's your plan with uh, with training? Then you say that you're still going to play a few leagues and maybe mm. you play a minor a minor tournament in mm. in, uh, in the autumn. In in the autumn, yeah. yeah. What, what what's your plan with practice? Just I will be practicing club? in my club. Oh, yeah, okay. uh, in the Danish league club I play for, Vilo. So I will okay. be training uh, twice a week on court there, once a week in the national center, and then physical training uh, twice a week as well. Okay. Um, so that's the the main plan. So three yeah. times a week on court, two times a week off court. Okay, it's like the general plan, and then we'll see after a couple of months how that's going. Uh, yeah, if I need to, yeah, adjust it in any way. If you suddenly get like extremely good, then you are back in back into the national training center again. Taking there's Thomas Cup years. next year, right? <laughs> so I want to be ready for that. Oh, yeah. interesting. <laughs> Well, yeah. very exciting. Yeah. Uh, I really yeah. hope for you that you um, get into the to the world championships and uh, Thank have you. a. We hope so. One more chance to perform in front of the the Danish crowd. I that think would they nice. would appreciate that as well. Yeah, that would be nice. It must be. I mean, it must be insane. Insanely like weird. Like mm. I mean, you say that you're still going to be there like once a week, so mm. you're not like totally gone from one day to another but still mm. you have been there like 18 years mm. every single day and then suddenly that's that's not longer your like daily routine mm. waking up and driving to point view and yeah, uh, yeah. just eating in the lunch afterwards and you know be, being around all the players mm. all the time um yeah it, it must be weird but i, I th- i think for ev- anyone that works in the same place for 18 years in a mm. row it's it's gonna be weird when you yeah when yeah. you change no matter what kind of job it is uh but yeah i i don't think about it too much actually i i think it's more like when i actually stop it's it's probably gonna hit a little bit uh, mm. differently yeah uh, right now i'm just still quite excited about trying to be ready for these couple of summer tournaments Um, and as I said, I, I still enjoy the training, so I just try to yeah enjoy it as, as much as possible uh, while I still can. Yeah. Uh, but I'm honestly looking forward to yeah the next phase, also because of the way my body has been for the past six months. I think it's going to be great for me not to have the same kind of pressure where I have to perform every day in training, uh, like training with you and the other guys. Like you, f- I feel some kind of. Uh, Like I have to perform. I have to be there. I have to be at 100% to try and also give you guys something, uh, and that is just a different kind of pressure compared to after the summer where I will be training just yeah again three times a week. I will have more time to recover, and yeah, the pressure will just be a little bit less. Mm. And I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It must be like, yeah. I mean, it must also be a relief. I mean, in in some in some ways right i mean one thing that you are one thing that i'm thinking is like you have also been through a lot of injuries a lot mm-hmm. of pain and, and and i've experienced it quite a lot the last 12 months yeah. uh, myself and i know how demotivating and how frustrating it is mm. um making a plan and then just a few days later you'll have to totally yeah make a new one and try mm. to adapt to some some injury or something it's just like mm. It's it's really really um, a hassle mm-hmm. uh, and it's and it's yeah. so so difficult uh, mentally and and there are times where I'm like, God damn it once again now I'm injured mm-hmm. and it's really demotivating but you have to dig yourself back up from yeah. from a hole mm-hmm. and you have experienced that uh, many times as well and now that you're getting older your body starts to to hurt a bit more and you're not recovering in the same way mm-hmm. that you did so. Aren't you like looking forward to that part as well, like not destroying your body? Yeah, a lot, time? a lot. I actually have pretty high expectations in terms of uh, 
like the league season I'm going to play next year, that I will feel much better for all the league matches because mm. I'm not pressuring myself in the same way. Mm. I don't have to do all the travels. I don't have to, yeah, again, push my body to the same extent as I've been doing for, for quite some yeah. time. Uh, and often like these league matches on weekdays and stuff, it's it's been pretty tough to do it. Whereas next season, it will be more like the highlights because it's going to be the the only matches I get. Mm. Um, so I, I'm I'm actually quite excited to see how my body reacts uh, next next year. Yeah. I think I will enjoy training and playing uh, more than I have for the past six months, where I've been dealing with yeah too many uh, issues all the time. But also, since you're not going to be practicing every single day and mm. always having to prepare for the upcoming tournament, I I I could imagine that you also stop thinking so much about mm. all your minor injuries and yeah. stuff. Yeah, um, I think that's a good point. I mean, I feel like during during a tournament week, you always like you are really aware of how's your body feeling. Mm -hmm. Now mm -hmm. it's quarterfinal day. Mm -hmm. Do I feel like I should on a quarterfinals day, or am I more fatigued, or mm -hmm. is there something on the body that's hurting when I get out of bed? Yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and I feel like you are in quite a lot of pain during a training week and during a tournament. But then once it's a uh, Saturday, it's weekend, and mm. maybe you don't have to do anything, or maybe you lose in the tournament, and then you're off the next day. Then it doesn't feel like you have all these uh, muscular pains because you 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 don't think about it anymore. Mm. You don't you know that you're not going on court anyway, so you're yeah. just like doing, yeah. doing something else and have uh, I mean having some time to to, to take your mind off. How, how, how am I feeling constantly? Yeah, I think I'm actually a little bit the opposite sometimes because okay. I often feel like now it's been a while since I've been like in quarterfinal and weekend matches uh, for tournaments, but I often felt like as long as I was in the tournament, I was feeling okay and I felt like I could still play even if I was sore and stuff like that. But often after I lost, no matter if it was second round quarterfinal or semifinal, uh, I would be like a lot more in pain and a lot more tired the next day it's kind of like now i know i don't have to play anymore so i could kind of yeah let go and accept the, yeah the condition my body was in where i was kind of alert all the time when i was still yeah mm. in tournament so i think maybe i'm a little a little bit the opposite no, but I've, i think it's it's correct that you you will get more so like mm. 24 hours or 48 hours after you have done the physical activity yeah, yeah. but what i'm thinking is is like you let go a bit more mentally. You yeah. don't you don't think about you don't yeah. always ah my oh, hamstring yeah, is true. so sore yeah. because you're not, not going to use your hamstring yeah. anyway. Yeah. So you, you, you don't you don't, really, don't focus on it really. You don't focus on yeah. it. Um but I mean yeah. it's it is true that if I do some if I do bench press now, mm. I will be sore tomorrow and maybe even more so the day after that. Mm. But then it starts to to get back to normal yeah. after that. Yeah. So so from a physical standpoint you're right. But I'm, I guess I'm thinking yeah. about more the mental relief. Yeah. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Anyways, yeah. um, this podcast shouldn't be all about you. No. Um, should I also explain uh, my situation and why I'm not in Malaysia? <laughs> it's a bit boring. But yeah, 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 it's no. a bit boring. Ah, you can. It's That's basically fine. the same story uh, <laughs> as Hans Christian. <clears throat> okay, so if all, you just all... like rewind for five minutes, <laughs> you can hear my story and yeah. just put Anas's name in yeah. it. Just a different injury. But uh, no, I've also been struggling with um, with an injury. Um, I wouldn't call it like a big injury. It's, it feels like a minor injury, but mm. it's just for some reason been a bit difficult for me to get totally rid of it. Mm. Same as you. Yeah. And I was also getting tired of practicing like I've been on court like mm. almost every single day, but it's just been like with a bit of pain and not really being able to like give it a hundred percent. Yeah. And at some point that was just so frustrating. So I decided to deload a bit from the court in order to try to get rid of the injury and uh, and then <clears throat> start to progress into yeah my badminton again and getting back to 100 and that's where i'm at now i'm i'm working towards towards that so i feel like i'm heading in the right direction and the goal is to return to competition win yeah i, I mean i don't i don't i don't like to um to stress too much mm -hmm. about it i feel like i'm i'm in a similar situation as i was in last summer just leading up to the five mm. uh, events in the summer yeah where i was like so stressed about okay i'm not going to play this week maybe i can mm. play next week yeah. and then i was like rushing 
my uh, my rehab a bit mm. and then i ended up messing up the next one and messing up the next one so yeah. i really need to take my time um get totally ready and then um and then when i'm ready i will travel to asia and participate in the tournaments and i really hope that it's going to be soon yeah but um, i don't want to like say i'm ready for thailand or singapore yeah. i'm just i'm taking my time and then slowly getting better and better every single day hopefully <clears throat> yeah but it's just like in when, when you're recovering from in, an injury it's not always like just going mm. uphill it's just like a roller coaster ride but yeah. hopefully it, it it ends uh yeah. it ends where it should and this will hopefully do that i'm quite sure it will um as mentioned it's not like something crazy mm. it's just a few minor things that has been yeah annoying me a lot um All right. and that's why we decided to skip to, Sudirman. yeah skip Sudirman yeah. cup i was uh I was selected for the team together with Victor and Rasmus, but we decided that there's no point in me traveling to China right now. Mm. I'm not going to be the second pick anyway because Rasmus had better training than me. Um, mm. I was lacking some some training at the highest level, so it was better for me personally to to stay home, trying to get rid of the injuries. Mm. And um, and yeah, I've withdrawn from Malaysia Open for yeah. now, yeah. Uh, and then we'll see uh, about the rest of the tournaments. But uh, yeah, I definitely really hope that I can participate in some of the tournaments out uh, out yeah. in Asia. That would be that would be fantastic. <clears throat> I'll tell you what, Hans Christian, it's so I just said it before, it's so so tough being injured mm. and it's so mm. frustrating. It's yeah. insane. Yeah. I mean, it's I think it's <clears throat> probably more frustrating for you compared to me because you have like a goal of the Olympics next year and like mm. for me it's a little bit easier at the moment because I don't have to chase points and stuff. But I imagine for you, like the, it adds a bit of extra stress that the Olympic qualifying has started now. Obviously, you will be fighting with Victor and Rasmus for uh, for the spots. And yeah, yeah, it's. I mean, the timing is not good. I mean, there's a lot going on right now with the, as you mentioned, the qualification, but more so just all the tournaments that I really, really wanted to play. Mm. Uh, and and again, I'm not ruling out that I'm going to play them. Let's let's wait and see. Mm. But I just really want to get yeah, out and yeah, play. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and also right now my ranking is like 20, mm. something like yeah, that. Yeah. And I don't feel like I'm a top 20 player. Mm. I mean, my goal is to get back uh, in the top five as mm. soon as possible. And yeah. I can't do that if I'm not um, playing tournaments, obviously. Yeah, so yeah. I think right now and I you have... also cannot do that if you're not training at a hundred percent, of course. I mean, that's that that's one of my big big worries, to be honest. Um, I feel like the last twelve months I've lost out on so many training sessions. Mm. I mean, or maybe I have been training, but it's been like on eighty percent, ninety percent. I ha I had my groin injuries last uh, mm. last year um, twice. Uh, and that was like five six months or something that mm. was struggling with that and now i've been struggling with some other things <clears throat> and it's just like i mean i want to be one of the absolute best players in the world mm. again and you're not going to do that by not practicing extremely hard no, because anyone true. else is doing that i mean yeah. so yeah. it's a different balance i mean because if you want to be injury free, that's pretty easy. Mm. It's just not train at all. <laughs> that's I mean, true. Yeah, but yeah. then you're not going to get one of the absolute best no. players in the world. But you also really, really need to be careful with not injuring yourself yeah. because you need to find consistency in the training and stuff. So that's the like super difficult mm. balance. Yeah. Um, and one thing that I'm really, really focusing on is getting back to consistency in my training. Yeah. Because if I if I if I'm if I'm not able to to get back to that, I don't think I'm ever going to be a top five player again. Yeah. So that's like I know I know that I have the level. I showed it just like a few months ago mm. uh, in all England and also a bit in in Spain. Yeah. But it's uh, I'm lacking consistency in tournaments and uh, in training. So yeah, I'm really really working hard to to get that again and, and fix my body and mm. yeah, I'm working a lot with. Uh, with with my mental state it's yeah. uh it's very de demotivating but also depressing also yeah very depressing um and also demanding <clears throat> to like overcome it mm. yeah super demanding i mean i have so many mood swings at the moment <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yesterday i was laying down on the floor right there 
just i was doing some foam roll and stuff and yeah, then afterwards yeah. i was just laying for like half an hour <laughs> i was listening to some some uh, old eminem songs yeah. like some trying sad, to pick yourself up sad songs and <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. so it, it is it is tough for sure for sure and um i can't set a date no but i will see you when i see you guys um yeah. out there and i'm looking forward to to get back and play badminton we all cross our fingers that it's going to be soon yeah yeah it's, uh, it would be nice to have you in Indonesia for my uh, last trip there as well. Yeah. I need to enjoy the Famond Hotel once again. I'll go to Indonesia no matter what. Yeah. And then I'll just good, uh, good, do good, some good. podcasts yeah, as, yeah. as last summer. Yeah. yeah. We'll get Taufik on once again. Yeah. <laughs> and everything will be we good. We need his take on why he's not in the Hall of Fame when Lee Chung Wei and Lin Dan is. Okay. Did, did you see that? I saw that they just uh, got, what, how do you say that? Got into the Hall of Fame. Yeah, they got inducted in the Hall of Fame. Okay. Uh, Lee Chung Wei and Lin Dan. And there, I just saw online there was a bit of talk about uh, Taufik and uh, Peter Gaiden not being... Uh, They're not uh, there? No. Oh, not that, yet. They still have time to be inducted at weird. some point. Well, I think it's fair enough that you pick the other two guys first. But you yeah, could but make they, a case they, but they, for... they retired uh, later, right? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, you could make a case also for Taufik because of the World Championship and Olympic gold that Chen Wei doesn't obviously, have, but I still obviously feel like... Obviously, he's a Hall of Famer, that's, yeah, that's yeah. for sure. I, I didn't even know that BWF definitely. had a Hall of Fame. No, they do. Where, they can, do. where can I find it? You can find it online somewhere. On I don't website? Know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But they're like they're quite picky with who they uh, put in it. Okay. So I'm not sure that Peter will ever be in it, actually. Wow. Yeah. That's that's crazy. Yeah, maybe just for us Danes because he means a lot to the Danish bands. I think he case. does in general. I think he yeah, also okay. deserves to be there, like Taufik, of course. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. Hans Christian, um, that was a lot of talk. That was about a lot us. of talk about you and you and I. Yeah. Now, now the fans know know where we are. Yeah, and that's uh, that's fine. But we need to talk about, of course, the Suriyaman Cup. Yes, just uh, ended uh, yesterday once again. China. Claimed the title mm. this time on home soil. Yeah, first time guys uh, back in China since the um, yeah since uh, Corona started in beginning yeah. of 2020, right? Yeah, I think uh, it was a four, 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 <laughs> first time in four years. I was I was playing the World Tour Finals in December 2019. Okay, yeah, so um, three and a half years. So uh, so that that was the last time we were yeah. in China. Yeah. Um, there, That's crazy. There has been a few events, but they have been cancelled yeah, yeah. all or every single time. Yeah. But now it uh, it looks it looks like there is like a not I don't know, but it didn't seem like there was a lot of restrictions. It seems like there were many people in mm. in the uh, in the crowd and stuff. It looks it looked very very good. It looked amazing. Beautiful and the, arena the, as well. Yeah, the atmosphere sounded to be pretty pretty good, yeah. especially when China played. So I think that was also one of the big storylines from Sudirman Cup that badminton is back in China. Uh, there's no doubt that it's it's so important in many ways. It's the top badminton nation, but also in terms of like the the commercial part of the sport. Mm-hmm. Like China is a hugely important market, yeah. the most important. Uh, so I think it was very significant for badminton that it's back in China and that it went well. It was an amazing tournament, and I should say a, a very good crowd there yeah. for for all the days. Uh, I spoke to a few of the Danes. They played China in the group stage as well and said like the uh, at- atmosphere was just amazing to play and fantastic. Yeah, I remember. I remember we also played the Sudirman Cup in China. Two thousand eighteen, maybe something like that, or maybe nineteen. Yeah, uh, yeah, it must have been nineteen. Must have been nineteen. It's always yeah. in uneven years. I do. I do not remember where where it was, but I also remember. I think we played against China. In Guangzhou, perhaps. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's so many cities out there yeah, that, that, yeah, that's yeah. kind of similar. Yeah. Um, and we have been in, in many different ones. Uh, but the atmosphere back then was also quite good in mm. some of the later rounds. Yeah. I have also experienced though in China, playing in these huge arenas, mm. but where they are like pretty empty. Yeah. Not many people there. Yeah. So it, it varies a lot. Yeah. yeah. I don't. I don't know why, but I guess like this time being the first time in three and a half years they're back. It's. I think it makes sense that people wanted to mm. finally go and watch uh, watch some badminton again. We, we saw it last summer as well. Uh, yeah. When when uh, I say we, but when the tournaments was I wasn't playing, but when the tournaments was back mm. in Malaysia, Indonesia, and Singapore again, that everywhere it was yeah. just like yeah. fully fully booked. Um, 
I guess because of the the fans really yeah. really uh, wanted to see Bampton uh, again. So um, yeah, but that's good to hear. Yeah. What about um, some of the obviously China won again. Uh, I think it was like the thirteenth time in in eighteen editions. Okay, pretty crazy. How many times uh, in a row do you know that? Yeah, not that many because Korea didn't they win the one in China you played actually? They did? I, I remember they won one quite recently. Uh, okay, so I'm not exactly sure about the year, but but the last the last time, what about in in Finland? That 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 must have been the last one. Yeah, 2021. I don't know who won. <laughs> China won. Yeah, maybe it must have been them or. F- I would say Japan, but like they were so close of losing in the semifinal this time. Yeah. I don't know if you watched that against uh, Japan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I did. I didn't watch it, but but I heard it. It was yeah. the men's double right yeah. against uh, Hogi and Kobayashi. Yeah, against uh, Liu and O oh from China. Yeah, uh, and Japan was leading two one, and then twenty sixteen in the final game of that men's wow. doubles, and lost twenty two twenty. And uh, yeah, I I only uh, watched some of it, but like uh, Liu Yuchen, like he played, yeah, out of this world. He, okay. he was he was amazing, he was amazing. And the atmosphere in that match was uh, yeah pretty spectacular. They were also celebrating like crazy. Those two guys. Okay, yeah. I I it just have a see. feeling like like uh, China when they are playing for for the country in mm. these major events yeah, like yeah. team events, but also when it comes to all england world championships uh, olympics mm. they really always uh, rise to the occasion yeah yeah they just definitely. bring out yeah. something yeah. something crazy yeah. something special yeah it's um yeah it's, and re- I, it's really amazing yeah another thing i was i noticed like when they won like they were celebrating like crazy but did you see like how many people actually ran onto court no. Like when you see other teams winning, it's like the 10 players and then uh, some support staff. Mm. Like for this China win, I think there were like 30 people on, <laughs> on the court. Like it was crazy. There was so many like extra players who probably they weren't even able to be able to play matches, but they were there for sparring and training and like so much support staff. It was, uh, they, they really invest a lot of uh, resources into it. That's where we, we from Denmark feel very, very small yeah, where, yeah, when we yeah. join those team events. Yeah. And I mean, Japan, Korea, China, yeah. they just have like so many, so many yeah. players, but so many staff, yeah. uh, coaches, physios. physios, all that stuff. Yeah. And we are like, yeah. we can't even fill out the box yeah, yeah. because we are, I mean, we're so small. We're bringing like 15 people. This time we total. brought like a huge team, we okay. feel like, and we had one physio, one video analysis, and one physical coach, and then the two <laughs> coaches. So that's a support staff of five. So that, that That's yeah. a huge one. Yeah. Um, yeah. We are small, yeah. but, but yeah. Um, I think... One match in the uh, in the final that I was a um, bit surprised about was the women's singles. Mm. Uh, An Se Young lost to Chin Yu Fei yeah. in straight games. Yeah. And the day before, Chin Yu Fei lost against uh, Akane Yamaguchi from Japan, right? Mm. Mm. Pretty yeah. convincingly yeah, as well. Yeah, something like 15 and 13. Yeah. yeah. And An Se Young had looked really strong in the entire tournament. Exactly, yeah. yeah. I think maybe <clears throat> I didn't watch the singles, uh, but I feel like because of the score, like they were down 2 0 Korea, and they kind of knew that with, they needed to win probably the mixed doubles to yeah. have a chance. So I, yeah. I kind of feel like like the pressure was so much on An Se Young that it was like a huge advantage for uh, for Chen Yu Fei in that one. Yeah. Um, so I think that played a part in it. But yeah, again, I didn't watch the match, so like it could be something completely different. But there's no doubt for me that An Se Young has still looked like the best women's singles player uh, for the past uh, six months. And it's not really been close in terms of Chen Yu Fei. It's more been Akane Yamaguchi mm. she's been fighting with. Yeah. So it did surprise me as well. Uh, but again, given the situation, maybe not as much. The first match in the in the in the final, mm. um, China against Korea. Mm. Uh, I think they delivered a comeback again. They um, did. They did. Saved two match points in the second game. Yeah, yeah. Lo- yeah, lost the first game and, yeah. and saved match point in the second. Yeah. And I also, if I'm not mistaken, the mixed double in when they faced uh, Indonesia also did quite a quite a good comeback. I think they it lost it the was first and were down like 19, 13 in the uh, second and came back to some, win it. Something like that, yeah. yeah. They just bring out something yeah. something crazy. Yeah. I mean, But I, I, I love to watch uh, Shang Siwei and uh, Huang Yekyong. Like, they bring so much intensity and 
uh, yeah, Sheng Shui, he's he's just phenomenal. Like he's so fast, he can just keep on attacking, and like no matter how bad the situation looks, he's just still one hundred percent committed uh, every single rally. And like yeah, three times in this tournament, they actually uh, got the reward for it. Uh, but it was it was a pretty unreal mixed doubles. I watched that in the final. Uh, Seal from Korea in the first uh, yeah two games he played out of this world. Mm. Like he was really dominating the game. Um, yeah, but uh, I I kind of feel like the fact that they didn't win the second game uh, also just killed them uh, mentally. Like they they couldn't really uh, adjust in the uh, in the third game and uh, mentally. So yeah, huge congrats to China uh, and I think also to Korea. I think they proved again they are such a strong team at team events. Mm, they definitely are yeah, yeah. super hard to beat. Uh, yeah, they they had this new men's doubles that uh, men's doubles player. I, I never really noticed this guy who played with Kim Won Ho. Uh, like they they played amazing. What about their men's single? I've never seen seen him before. Yeah, the other guy, not, not Yeon, they used uh, Yeon, uh, the guy you lost to yeah, Thomas yeah, Kopla. Yeah, yeah. They used him for a couple of the matches, and then this guy Lee in the other two. I, I didn't know him either. No. So uh, I think it's a very typical Korea. Like they bring out some players you don't really notice on a daily basis, and they play just mm. phenomenal when it's uh, team events. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is there any like uh, any teams that didn't deliver at all? Any like. Yeah, I think for me the biggest disappointment uh, will probably have to be India. Mm. Um, also, given how they won the Thomas Cup and like it, it kind of felt like they were trying to build up the same kind of atmosphere around it. They were pretty uh, active on social media. Yeah, yeah, they were, they were, and uh, yeah, I think the expectations were higher um, than what it has been for previous editions. Uh, and yeah, didn't even make it out of the group stage, and they weren't really that close. Um, yeah. So they lost to Malaysia and to Chinese, Chinese Taipei, Taipei, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm a bit disappointed about that, and I'm sure they will be uh, as well. Uh, and I, I think actually for me, one other result that was very significant, I tweeted about it as well. Uh, it, it didn't really have any impact on the tournament, but France beating England 5-0, I kind of felt like... Uh, like England has for sure been going down for some time and France has been going up, but it was just kind of like the final proof that like England is no longer the European number two nation. Mm. It's France or maybe Germany can also beat them on the right day. Mm. But in the past, it was always like Denmark, England, like the two strongest nations. Uh, but th this just kind of felt like it was final proof that now France has for certain Surpassed. overtaken uh, yeah. England. I, I thought that was quite significant. We, I mean, we were that close of losing mm. uh, when we played France in the final uh, in the European team event. Yeah, yeah. Um, they have a strong team and they have many good players on on the rise. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah, Germany as well. Yeah. yeah I think Germany on the day they it's can close, they close can beat those France. Two. Yeah, because they they have a pretty good chance in women's singles, mixed doubles, and also men's doubles. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Um. Yeah, one um, one thing that we need to to follow up on mm. uh, that was uh, the the big topic of our latest podcast, and we have a few questions about that one as well. Yeah, is the spin surf, um, mm. and um, it has been banned in some tournaments. Uh, it 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 has gotten like an in interim ban. Yeah, in Tem temporary temporary ban in well, uh, yeah. at the Sudirma Cup and and next week or this week. In Malaysia Open, yeah, but it hasn't been banned in the minor tournaments here in Europe, right? Yeah, yeah, it has. has it? Yeah, it has. Yeah, okay. The only reason why they could still do it in Swedish Open uh, when the ban was announced was because the tournament had already started. Okay, so they couldn't change the rules like during a tournament. Okay, um, but in Slovenia, which was an international challenge last week, they also weren't allowed to uh, to okay. use the serve, and there will be like an annual general meeting uh, for the. Uh, yeah, BWF, I think this week uh, or next week, where they will uh, discuss it again and okay. figure out if they need to ban it for good or maybe just prolong the uh, like the temporary ban. Mm. Uh, I could actually imagine a situation where they ban it until after the Olympics, okay, <laughs> and then see again if uh, in that period if they can figure out if it's something that's good to have for okay. the future or not. Good or bad? That is uh, that is. That that it has been banned. Yeah, what do you think? I think it's good. I mean, yeah. 
I think it was ruining the game. I yeah. mean, we we like to see rallies, mm. we like to see action, and it's not. I mean, it's it's fun for a little while mm. to to see the surf in action, just because it's something new mm. and it's kind of like mind blowing that you're yeah. able to to get that much spin mm. into a surf. But over time, it it would become pretty boring. Yeah. So uh, I I think it's fine that it's banned. But I've heard I have heard rumors that there's many players that that's like, God damn it, because yeah, they yeah. were just practicing it yeah. on and on and on, and they probably got like very very good at it. Mm. Um, and we did it also mm. out on the national training center, yeah. like both the doubles, but also the singles players yeah. were like standing yeah. before and after every practice trying to to make this spin serve. Mm. Um, it was very fun to like try to learn. Mm. I don't know if you did it. I didn't see you do it. A very lot. little. I yeah. tried for a few minutes and then I figured out this is not for me. <laughs> <laughs> and I was hoping for a ban as well, so I didn't really want to yeah. spend my time doing it. <laughs> Wait, Sorry. Mr. Bermanson. I didn't. Uh, I didn't yeah. expect them to to come up with the ban. No, so that, quickly that, that soon actually. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I, I was quite certain that that they won't be able to do anything mm. um, for the summer tournaments. Yeah. But um, yeah, they, they they come up with the band quite yeah. quickly, BWF. Yeah. Uh, I think in terms of, uh, like if you compare it to the Celic serve that was banned back in the 80s where you hit the feathers first, uh, like since that one is banned, I think it makes sense that this one is also banned because it's kind of the same outcome. Mm. Um, but yeah, the only thing I I miss about it is I would have liked to see uh, how people would deal with it at the highest level mm. uh, like if if someone could actually figure out a way to make a decent return but mm -hmm. i just i kind of fear that it would the only possible solution is to just make a high lift and mm. I, I don't really think that should be the direction no. for uh, for the sport but last time we yeah. spoke about the serve um we haven't we hadn't really seen it in in uh, in action yet mm. it was just yeah. like these few clips uh yeah, yeah. Of, of some some matches but mostly it was like uh yeah it was from this one tournament where marcus Rensoy played in and, Polish then, and then the yeah. second one was a uh, uh, joy from yeah. korea yeah where he did it as well but other than that it was just like some videos on instagram yeah, yeah. of him practicing it yeah. and stuff but we have seen it quite a lot since since yeah. then and yeah. also in the singles yeah. um and it, it it seems like it was so so difficult yeah. to return yeah. Um, I watched uh, Marcus Rensoy from Denmark who mm. I don't know if he was the one that came up with the surf but uh, I think he got most of the credit uh, yeah. maybe he is the one I don't know um, but he did it in one match against I think it was a pair from Chinese Taipei and it was just insane to watch mm. they had absolutely no chance of, mm -hmm. of making like a proper yeah, return proper they return. could get it in, in, in play at times um, mm. yeah but it uh, it looked <laughs> extremely yeah, yeah. difficult for them yeah i know they had a good win him and his partner rasmus in uh, in swedish open against an indian pair and like this indian pair they were so pissed that yeah uh, yeah he was still allowed to make the serve because i think that was the day before the ban was announced mm -hmm. and they were like ah you should have done it like one mm -hmm. day earlier yeah yeah well that's it must yeah. be annoying to play against like uh, like this play against this trick this serve mm -hmm. Knowing that it's actually banned, yeah, 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 yeah. from next week, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, have travel, so you have traveled all the way to Europe to play a tournament, yeah. and and then you just face someone yeah. who can just do this yeah. crazy serve, yeah. and you're not able to get yeah. any play. No, that's. Uh, I, I spoke to this Danish guy, uh, Christian Kerr, who is uh, he played a small tournament in in Luxembourg Open and International Series, where he lost in the qualifying uh, to another Danish guy who's. Like not really at his level. And Christian won the first game 21-13 and was leading 13-9 in the second. And then this other guy, Alexander, he starts doing the spin serve mm -hmm. and ends up winning 21-19, 23-21. <laughs> and like Christian, he is like extremely annoyed. He almost cannot get it into play, but the few times he can, he often wins the rally and then he can score on his own serve. Mm -hmm. But yeah, ends up losing uh, anyway. Yeah. Like he was so frustrated he was on his way to winning 21 9 21 mm. 9 and then all of a sudden ended up losing that's yeah. crazy i saw i saw i saw that one because i think i think many of you guys you yeah, and some of the other danes players shared it on on mm. uh, on instagram it, it <laughs> yeah it was uh, it was kind of fun to watch just because you've never seen anything yeah, like yeah. it right it's fun to watch it's cannot be fun to be the part no on the other side of the court one thing that i'm wondering though is i mean because i saw marcus Rensoy uh, mm. and, and his partner i saw they 
they played this match against a pair from Chinese Taipei and they won. They 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 wasn't able. They weren't able at all to get it into play, mm. but they didn't win the tournament. Mm. So yeah. I mean, the the pair that they end up losing to must have been able to get it back sometimes, right? Yeah. Because oh, I guess that just says a bit about what level they actually are at when the rallies get going. Because like. <laughs> But yeah, it's not a nice way to put it. But if yeah. you can get it going with a high lift, for example, yeah. then you get the rally going, and then as soon as you win a point, of course you have your own serve, and then you have a good chance of, of winning points. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I, but I guess it must that, be returnable. Yeah. Then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it must be True. sometimes. Sometimes. I think I think he, Marcos. I think he he shared a video from Badminton Europe mm. where they they got a real good angle yeah, yeah. of him making yeah. it, and it's crazy. Yeah. Uh, how much uh, how much it spins yeah I've, I've really never thought that it would be possible to get that much spin no into with control in, into a shuttle yeah. car. no it's um, crazy so it's crazy. it's, it's kind of crazy to figure some figure this out like so mm. many years after mm. starting to play by yeah. i mean you've been True. playing for like forever yeah never seen anything like it no no yeah maybe in in 30 years there would be like a new uh new thing yeah. that's uh yeah i don't know I think no. Misha Silberman from uh, yeah. Israel. Yeah, he, yeah. he has this uh, slice where he destroys the shot. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> from his forehand side, right? I think that should be legal as yeah. well. <laughs> <laughs> we have a question about how many shuttlecocks we can use in a match. And if you play against wow. him, then you can use quite a lot. Quite a lot, yeah. Because he, yeah. he, he like really slices into the cut yeah. and then he like... All the fellows is uh, just falling off. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a good trick. If you played against Lin Dan, you could also use a lot because like mm. he changed shuttlecocks after almost yeah. every rally. Yeah. So yeah. I played I played against him once and I was like, fine. Yeah. I, I, you get a lot of break. Yeah. So, get a lot yeah. of uh, yeah. a lot of breaks. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, Hatch Christian, uh, one other question, and that's uh, back to the Sudirman Cup. It was from the quarterfinal match between Denmark and Malaysia yeah. uh, where uh, Denmark lost 3-1 three, 3-1 three. Three, one. we won yeah. the latest yeah. Yeah. we yeah. won free, uh, lost 3-1 to Malaysia um, yeah a, a tough team match for the Danes mm. uh, I think the mixed doubles had a had a had a good chance on mm. paper but but they lost and then Victor yeah, got an injury, uh, something with his hamstring pretty early in the match against Lizzie Jar. Mm-hmm. And then it was an uphill battle from there, yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. for sure. But the question is really about what went uh, what went on in the women's singles yeah. where Mia Blickfeld uh, played against uh, Go from yeah. um, Go Jinwei from Malaysia. And uh, to be honest, I was at a um, family birthday. Mm. So I was like watching a bit of it, but mm, then I joined yeah, the yeah. the gathering and then yeah. watching a bit. So yeah. I didn't really get to see a lot. Mm. I saw once that I think it was in the very end of the third, like Mia uh, was was at the net and then just really like not really delivered the shuttle in in a in a good manner. Yeah, just like hit yeah. it out of the the baseline or something like yeah. that. Yeah. And then I've seen some stuff online where she took the shuttle out of Kojin Wei's yeah. hand. Yeah. I don't know what do you, do you know what went on in that situation? Yeah, it was at the very start of the third game, uh, which was also the only part I was watching was uh, some of the third game. I was in Tivoli actually, uh, <laughs> but yeah, nice. Um, Go wanted to uh, take a challenge, so like it dumps right on like the sideline, and uh, the umpire says no because it's too late. And Mia is also protesting, saying like it's it's too late. She cannot do it. So the Go when when uh, walks up to the umpire to try and discuss uh, like why she's not allowed to it, and then Mia walks up there and just takes out the shuttle because it's like her point that was called in, uh, and that that's the one that she's getting a lot of uh, like heat about now. Mia that it's very unsportsman like to uh, to snatch out the shuttle mm. of uh, of Go's hand, uh, but there's also quite a few that mention like this one episode you just mentioned where yeah. she's like flicking the shuttle over in a not very nice manner and mm-hmm. I think she does that one more time uh, okay. in the match as well I just uh, saw the reaction from Go Jin Wei there yeah. she was like yeah, yeah. What, 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 she, what is yeah. she doing or yeah. something like that and then I figured out okay there's been something going on mm-hmm. here. Mia said in an interview that like uh, she had been annoyed most of the match because Go uh, was doing the uh, Nishimoto trick the one that he does on you where he's uh, like serving mm-hmm. 
right in the moment mm -hmm. when you're looking up, Mia said the goal did the same. So like every time Mia looked up, then the serve came mm. straight away. Uh, so she was kind of annoyed with that. And she said like in the heat of the moment, she was just, yeah annoyed with it uh, okay. but she also admitted that it was uh, probably yeah a bit uh, unsportsmanlike um, but I think just in general it's it's pretty crazy to see like she's getting hundreds of messages uh, threatening her about this week in Malaysia and like uh, yeah she should stop playing badminton and like all these kind of disrespectful messages which is for me a complete overreaction in terms of what happened uh, I think yeah we can all agree that it's not the nicest thing she did but like nothing happened to go. It's not like she assaulted her verbally or physically or anything. It's like she took out a shuttle of her hand. Mm. Not very nice. She didn't deliver it very nice twice. Uh, but I just kind of yeah feel like it's it's an overreaction in uh, okay. in many ways. The the way that she's being treated now. Okay. Uh, yeah. I saw a few article articles on yeah. uh, from some of the Danish um, medias mm. about these negative comments. I think Mia has had had shared a post about she she wanted people to keep like a, a polite yeah, tone totally. online um, mm. and then there was like a bunch of these uh, not so nice comments mm. showed in these articles yeah, and stuff yeah. and that's yeah that's um, unfortunately uh, part of being an athlete mm. <laughs> yeah. I mean it, it can get like super cruel sometimes yeah. Yeah. it's a uh, it's I mean, it's totally fair to get yeah. really invested as a fan, and obviously, uh, people is cheering for for their their favorite. And mm. um, but yeah, it it can get super 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 cruel sometimes. Uh, I mean, some of the messages yeah. that that I've received as well, and yeah. you have, and I think everyone has. Mm. Um, it's like very very nasty. Yeah, I once I once received like messages from some guy after I lost a match. Obviously, I wasn't happy. I was <laughs> super, super frustrated and annoyed yeah. and stuff. He sent me a photo of him holding like a old school uh, gun, like mm. a revolver. Yeah, yeah. Oh, how do yeah, you say a gun. that? A gun. Okay, yeah. like, yeah. like, like an old school gun from like said, a western movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and and like and, yeah. and wrote something like "I'll come and get you" and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's like yeah, wow. it's pretty scary. It's wow, pretty scary. dude. Yeah. I mean, so yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't want to um, take a side on on what went on in the match because I did not watch it mm. uh, proper properly, so I don't really know what went on. But definitely, people should, um, yeah, they shouldn't behave like that online. Mm. It's 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 yeah, it's really really bad uh, yeah. manners for sure. Yeah. yeah, the reason I was looking at the phone was I was just looking up Mia's Instagram and like mm. her latest post. She has eight hundred and fifty comments, mm. and it's not even anything about the match. It's uh, yeah from a previous tournament. She she put up something from Sudirman Cup has five hundred and forty five comments, and that's much and more than she. Yeah, yeah in like in a in a normal gets. post, she would have like uh, yeah, let's check like this one thirty eight comments. Yeah, so it's like five to eight hundred extra comments. Yeah, yeah. and I I, I guarantee <laughs> yeah I guarantee it's probably not five hundred positive uh, no. comments. No. Like the only thing where I I feel like. Uh, again, I agree that it's it's not very sporting what she did, uh, but. Like Malaysia had this men's doubles Ong and Seo in the uh, group final against Chinese Taipei that wins the match on a point where they hit it twice. So like uh, Ong or Teo hits the shuttle into his partner and then it gets over. They win the point and win 23-21. Uh, they know they hit it twice. Obviously, they don't tell the umpire, uh, which I would also not have done and I don't think anyone would have done. Uh, but they win the match on that. And they're not getting a lot of heat for being unsporting, and I'm like that. That's maybe they are out in uh, in Chinese Taipei. Maybe they are in Chinese Taipei, but they're not in Malaysia. No. And a lot of the comments that Mia is getting is from Malaysian fans. Mm. I'm kind of like, if you're telling her to be more sporting, I hope you're also saying it to your own players. Because mm. um, yeah, again, I don't think what Mia did is sporting or anything, but I just feel like yeah, there needs to be some kind of balance in terms of like how much abuse you get afterwards mm. for yeah. something in, of this caliber. It was different if she actually said something very nasty mm. uh, or yeah, became physical in some way. Uh, so that's for me where the line is. Um, yeah. yeah. For me, like it, it doesn't really bother me at all. It's, I mean, I know it's a part of the game, mm. 
Mm. I'm not saying that we should just accept that this is the way it is. Mm. But I'm also often thinking like, just imagine being like on a football stadium with mm. like 40,000 people screaming something yeah, against yeah, you. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the people in the crowd, they're probably drunk. Yeah. I mean, they yeah. hate you. Yeah, I mean, they're yeah, just yeah. like so passionate about supporting their team. Mm. I mean, the things that, that that's being being said on, on in environments like that is just yeah. absolutely insane yeah, yeah, I, I could imagine yeah. and again i'm not saying that we should just accept that's the way it is let's let's totally try to mm. move in the other direction um away from this like cyber bullying yeah. or, or, or whatever it is but it's just like yeah i, I mean, get your the, point it's kind of like when we say something happens on court in the heat of the moment it's kind of the same for the fans sometimes that they maybe say things in the heat of the moment because they're so invested in it. Yeah, maybe. But what I'm saying is also that it could be so much worse. <laughs> yeah, it also could be much worse. Yeah. But yeah, anyways, yeah. anyways, I like I like when there's something, when there's uh, some controversy <laughs> in some yeah. match and yeah. often, I mean, I haven't watched it, you haven't watched it, mm. but then s- people start to like uh, yeah. comment, this <laughs> is a topic for the Bamson experience, Hans Christian and yeah, Alessandro yeah. Hansen should yeah. um, dig, dig down into this. And mm. I don't know, I, I feel like, I feel like people is expecting us yeah. to um, support uh, Gorgian Way or talk down on Mia in this yeah, situation. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if we did that. Uh, as an, I, I want to be pretty neutral in whatever happened in mm. the match because I didn't see mm. it. Um, obviously, behave well, but I, I mean, yeah. I'm not, I'm not behaving well all the time yeah. either. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, I don't yeah. want to yeah. portray me as no. a like someone that always like follows the rules or anything no. like that no, I, agree. Um, I just want people to think about like the like definitely. put things yeah. in the right perspective uh, like how, how bad was it before you start saying 100%. bad things and if and it I was know very me, bad yeah. then just go crazy yeah exactly exactly <laughs> no. i know that mia and uh, go Wei also spoke to each other after the match and like there's no bad blood between the two okay. of them or That's anything good. uh they're That's as good, good friends uh, as they were before the match what so. happens on the court stay on the court yes sometimes yeah unless you actually beat each other up <laughs> say something bad about your mom that would be kind of crazy yeah 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 you shouldn't do that either no i think from what i heard that was what happened do you remember when the two thai guys uh, started fighting in canada over years ago mm-hmm. manipong i think and, it was uh, in new zealand i'm pretty sure it was in canada sure yeah i'm pretty sure but anyway i heard that it was because one of the guys said something insulting about the other guy's mom and then they just started chasing each other that's, down. that's the one thing you don't do yeah exactly that uh, don't insult anyone's mom no people go crazy over that yeah. uh and it makes sense yeah you shouldn't do that at all um yeah 55 minutes that sounds. was that yeah we, we've uh we, we've covered uh most of the most of the topics and uh we have a Many questions. Um, what the one question that we were talking about that we did not record in the beginning? Yeah. Should we just uh, do that one? Well, now we have to. We have. We have. <laughs> it's a pretty. A pre, uh, oh, you, yeah. you, you, you can say no. If no, you, no. Uh, it's it's, it's it. too much of a cliffhanger to not do it. So it, let's. It's do a it. crazy good question. <laughs> um, no, guys. So there's there's one asking. Um, He's he's uh, 15 years old. He just started playing badminton. He's practicing practicing five or six times a week and asking if he if he can become like one of the absolute best players in mm. the world. I'm, I think that that's that he's asking if he can be a pro player, right? A pro player. Yeah. Um, and to be a professional yeah. player, you need to play at a very high level in badminton because there's no money in like low yeah. level badminton. Yeah. Yeah. And we were discussing whether we should answer this question because we really don't want to like destroy someone's dreams mm-hmm. or anything like that but i think both of our both of our um, opinions opinions uh, is that it's going to be pretty difficult to become like a, a pro player let's say a top 50 player in the world when when you start that late yeah. um we talked about there's so much skill in badminton like technical and there's so much tactical Mm. awareness there's so much physical uh, and and it's difficult to build that up when you start um, at 15 and then also having in mind that 
you are maybe going downhill from after 30 or 32 mm. or something mm. 33 mm. something like that yeah it's like the physical part is the part that's the easiest to learn but like as you say like the technical skill the 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 tactical awareness are mm. like the really difficult parts but it's also a little bit difficult to answer because we don't know has this person had any exposure to badminton at all like if you start from absolute scratch you have never had a racket in your hand maybe mm. the person played some tennis before or something yeah. like, like where you have this hand eye coordination it's a pretty big transition if you haven't yeah. done anything and then yeah. suddenly you start to practice five or six times yeah, yeah definitely definitely week. yeah that's impressive that's really good but there's no, no doubt. matter what then you should keep doing that yeah. it's definitely good for for a lot of things i actually saw one one uh one reel on instagram mm. someone someone he looked like very clever i don't know who mm. who he was but he said that if you do ragged sport you live longer yeah i've read that many times you have? I don't, yeah i don't know if it's true but i've read no. it many times yeah let's just spread the rumor here yeah. with, without knowing anything about yeah. it yeah you could say in general if you do sports you probably will live longer than people that don't do sports that's uh so. that's a good point yeah. so i guess um i guess our advice would be to start earlier than 15 years old if you want to become like a pro pro player yeah. um but there's still a good chance to develop a lot even for like this person you can still definitely. get to enjoy the sport and compete at also a good level like, yeah sure sure it, it, i mean it all depends on what your motive is it, yeah. is it to yeah. become a pro player mm. then you really need to like yeah start a little bit earlier little probably bit earlier. so if you're watching this and you are like 8 to 12 mm. get going as soon <laughs> as possible yeah yeah um before yeah. it's too late agree after agree. Thir- 13 is too late yeah yeah that's uh that's my statement on no i don't know i don't know if there there is an an age um but Lim. um just get going guys start playing bamson from an early age yeah um, get some kids and get them to play badminton. Is that's Vin- deep. Is, that's is, very deep. Is, 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 Vin- deep. is Vincent playing? He is playing. Yeah, I'm coaching him every Saturday. We have this. We call it mini ton, mm-hmm. which is like fifty percent just fooling around, playing, doing other things, and then fifty percent where games, you play something, e- e- eating the shuttlecocks. Yeah, and stuff and like that, <laughs> <laughs> chasing each other and stuff, and fifty percent where you try to like hit the shuttle and, and stuff. Do- and you play with balloons as well and stuff. I know my mom has been a mini son coach for many many years. Yeah, yeah. How old it's is fun. he, Vincent? He's now? five. Five. So he so also. So there you see, guys. He started. He started yeah. ten years. Um, yeah. Ten years earlier than yeah. the than the one asking this question. He's so. also playing football and doing gymnastics. Wow. He's I'm going, trying to make him a super athlete. He's going to yeah. live for a very long time. Yeah. He needs to win all the stuff I never won. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys. No. That's it for this episode of the Banter Experience. It was a pleasure uh, to be back here in the couch with you, Hans Christian. Likewise, Anas. Um, and yeah. Oliver. And nice Oliver. to see your Oliver beautiful face again. Camera. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. And um, yeah, I don't know when we'll do one again, but hopefully soon. Mm-hmm. Online or... Maybe live. Maybe live. It's not really couch. live, but, no, but, but, yeah. but you know what you know. What you know we, what we mean. You know what we mean. <laughs> So guys, if you haven't done it, please subscribe to the Banton Experience on YouTube. Go and give us a follow on Instagram as well. You can also go to Hans Christian's personal account on Instagram and my personal account on Instagram. True. And uh, and give us a follow there. Leave a comment. Let us know what you thought about all the stuff that we uh, discussed here. If you absolutely disagree or agree, uh, we, we, we love to know it and, and get some some feedback on these episodes. Anything to add? Perfect. Bye-bye, guys. Bye, guys.